underfelt are epoxy-based systems, uh, which contains also in most cases quite, quite a huge amount of fillers. And they are also designed to flow under a gap. Um, so the components they typically have a gap of 100 to 400 microns. So the underfill materials need to flow under the gap to protect in the solar balls. That's the main purpose of underfill, that they protect solar balls and to prevent the, that they will have cracks. The main challenge, of course, is if you have a huge amount of fillers, um, it, we need to prevent that they will settle down during the, the storage conditions. So that is also the reason why we freeze them in, so at minus 20, minus 40 degrees, to prevent that the fillers can settle down, but also uh, that the reaction cannot start because we're talking about the one component systems. So of course, that's also a challenge. We talk about very small gaps. We talk about relative high viscous materials. So what is often needed, or what is always needed, that we uh, heat up the board with PCBs so that we get the material to a nice viscosity, a very low viscosity, so that it can flow immediately under the component once it touches uh, the board. Heating up the board is also often increasing the surface tension, and that's uh, also by, by increasing the surface tension, you also create indeed the, the possibility that the material flows better. You improve actually the capillary force uh, of your material so that it can flow completely under the component. The main purpose, uh, value proposition of underfill is uh, improving the uh, reliability of the solder joints. This can be by improving the mechanical reliability, this can be by improving the thermal reliability, um, or just by uh, protecting against moisture. So then bending on the application, uh, we also need to see what kind of underfill do we need. If we really need to improve the thermal reliability, we have to look to underfills that uh, really have, uh, uh, can cope with, uh, for example, for the motor is from minus 40 to 150 degrees. So these underfills really need to protect that uh, the solar balls can resist the, this high temperatures uh, from minus 40 to plus 150 degrees. So the, the stress that the solar balls will have with this thermal cycle, so the underfill, we, we need to absorb the distress. When we talk about mechanical stress, for example, in smartphones, then we have more a, a dropping effect. So when the smartphone drops, the solar balls cannot crack. So there we need to have more flexible underfills, so that again, that the stress will be absorbed by the underfill and that the solar balls will not crack. We have also a huge portfolio. We have a different portfolio for uh, underfills, for, um, um, like I said, more automotive and, and, uh, and aerospace applications. They normally need very high reliable underfills. And we have a portfolio, uh, it's more reworkable underfills, like from, for smartphones, telecom. There we don't really need this high thermal liability. There we need more, uh, like I said, uh, prevent, preventing that it breaks uh, when it drops. Uh, so these need to be more flexible. And most cases they also need to be re reworkable because on a smartphone it's, it's one PCB normally. When, when there's one component that does not work anymore, it's the complete smartphone they need to throw away. So they require also reworkable underfills. So that's two portfolios that we have. Uh, to, to cover actually the whole market and uh, to finally to protect the solar balls uh, to crack and to increase the lifetime of the uh, electrical components.